Hi, I'm Peter from Ranger Country, and here I am today with Mark Camusio. Hi there. Yes, it's uh, very nice to be here, and I must say it's uh, quite an impressive little setup you've got here. Today, Mark and I are here to have another look at one of the classic British air rifles. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 this is the S400 from Air Arms, and it's one of my all-time favourite air guns. I mean, the very best gun I've ever owned was a um, slightly tweaked version of this. And uh, it's there's so many guns on the market now which are offering all sorts of um, incredible features and a lot of features. This keeps it simple, but it's the sheer quality of it um, that really shines through, isn't it? And there are there are a lot of guns coming on the onto the market from different parts of the world, um, and they're at a similar price point to to, to similar to this S four ten. And are they better? Are they as good? Hmm. I mean, if you want to keep the price, repair it right down. Obviously, go for the start at the the base beach model. It's exactly the same action, but you got it's just beach stock, so it's that bit cheaper. Um, but yeah, then you've got all the all the options of the um, different. So obviously, walnut stock. This is the super light version, isn't it? This with is the super light traditional in the brown, and they also do the super light green as well, mm. as well as the couple of walnut versions. And then there's a factory, yeah, factory walnuts uh, thumb hole stock, isn't the it? Which hole, is yes. that's yeah. quite impressive. It's been going quite a few years, but it's uh, it's got a very stylish it design. It's very nice. So there's a few options there. But. Now this is available in the, this is the rifle length, isn't it? The, the carbine length is also available and it's round about four inches shorter, but yeah. we'll come to that a bit later. So you basically, yeah, you'd lose a few, um, you'd lose a few inches on the cylinder and likewise on the barrel. So it just keeps all the weight down. So if you just want to, um, to keep everything as light as possible, you end up with a very compact gun. You lose a few shots over the charge, um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great option if you just want to, lightweight sporting hunting mm, rifle absolutely now hunting the sporting rifle now i think this rifle is suitable for hunting or target shooting and i think you've had a little bit of success over the years with uh yeah. with <laughs> yeah, the 400 or the 40. it's quite it's it, i do get quite emotional with these rifles as silly as that sounds because i bought one um from the was it the midland game for actually quite a few years ago and i went uh was obviously going halsey with my, my father uh, we just wanted a hunting gun and I couldn't quite believe how accurate it was. And uh, it was one that Nick Jenkinson had uh, tweaked around with for a South African um, trip. And they'd extended the cylinder and the barrel, uh, it was basically the FAC cylinder. And they did a limited run and it was just, it's the best gun I've ever, I've ever owned. But um, of course that was virtually the sort of prototype um, in a way because it was so popular, they then brought in the HFT 500, which of course has the extended cylinder as well. Mm. But yeah, but like we bought it as a hunting rifle, the, it was the S400, and um, I couldn't quite believe the performance. And then, yeah, I did, uh, I went one a few shoots with it, but yeah, cracking rifle. And you've still got that, of course, Mark. Yes, yeah, still got it. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So, experience levels to, to, to have this, um, you know, who, who, who would have this rifle? I mean, I mean, you could buy it as a as a um, beginner's rifle, uh, but obviously you're paying that little bit more. There's plenty of very cheap budget rifles, so it's really if you if you've got if you can afford to go that bit higher, this is a uh, this is sort of um, absolutely air arms yeah. entry level, isn't it? Absolutely, but their yeah. entry level is yeah. you know it's top class. Yeah, I, I think if you if you bought one of these as an entry level, you would stay with it for considerably longer than you would if you if you mm. if you spent. Three hundred and fifty pounds yeah. on a. I've often thought they're a bit like a Mercedes. You can buy a Mercedes and then sort of it's modular, and then you can add bits to it. And this, the actions are so good. And say so you restock it or have it regulated, you can play around. But as a as a base model, it's um, yeah, it takes takes some beating. You touched on regulated there because these aren't regulated, are they? No, that's right. Yeah, I mean, oh. Air, Air Arms have sort of progressed and they've brought in a whole load of regulated models and uh, as options. But yeah, these um, remain unregulated. Mm. Um, but it keeps it simple, and it's if you're careful charging, that's what it's all about, isn't it? I don't. I mean, we have had regulated versions of these into the workshop for servicing. I don't think they shoot as well as a factory. Mm. Well, there's a lot to be said. I mean, yeah. I, I've got to say that that gun I had um, probably shot at its best 
when it was um, straight from air arms and uh, it never had a regulator in it. And yet, if, if you charge, get the pressure right, uh, be very careful with your charging pressure, and then you'll get the, that, you know, that, they talk about a sweet spot, but that very, uh, that extended um, shot count, which is consistent. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's um, very impressive. Fantastic. Now, we, we do, we offer this rifle as a package as well. Um, and just follow the link below for, find it on the website. Now with the, as I say, we've mentioned there's a lot of options with um, with these rifles. Obviously as it comes from the factory, you get a sort of um, muzzle protector or barrel finisher like this with that sort of classic air arm swirl, very attractive. But of course that's all just simply held on with a um, grub screw. You can take that off and then you get a, um, fact, a dedicated silencer or a moderator from air arms. They do that Q-Tech version and various others and there'll be other silencers you can fit on with an adapter so um, that will be a slide fit onto the end of these barrels um, and then charging wise you've got the classic um, sort of I'll call it a T-valve but it's that that classic inlet valve from air arms possibly the safest on the market because when you charge when you actually link your airline it locks into the airline there and um, yeah that makes it really safe doesn't mm, it it does yeah yeah come yeah. On. A lot safer than uh, pushing a probe in. Yeah, and the O rings so, last a lot longer as well. Do they? Yeah, they, right. they, yeah, they do. Yeah, but that's quite neat. Yeah, so we've 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 touched on the, the stocks that are available. Now we, this is available in one seven seven and two two, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that's right. And you'll get um, so you get a if you get the four. This is the four ten. So you've got the um, you get a ten shot magazine, and it's air arms um, sort of. Uh, it's like a plastic. Um, cassette style magazine but they're pretty reliable and they're sort of more they're si more simplified design but because of that they're, they're very reliable they and they snap reliable. into the the side of the breech and um and thereafter you're just cycling the bolt to um yeah for your for your 10 shots as, as you mentioned there it's a it's traditional bolt action rifle isn't it this one mm. um but bolt up slide it back very smooth when, when the new this, sorry, I think this one's actually got a custom. That's a custom bolt on there, isn't it? I think the the standard ones are like satin finish. Yes, you're right. Yes, yeah. you're right. That, that's a that's had a custom. Very nicely done. But yeah, that's it a, is. It is. It's a as you said before. Lots of custom parts can be added to them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And, De I mean, definitely. Trigger wise as well on here. It's a um, it's a proper two stage trigger. As in, as you pull the first stage, you actually start the sears to move apart. Um, which is safer and sort of more refined than a sort of pseudo, which you get in on a lot of much, much cheaper guns. Mm. Um, the, the downside, I mean, I think the, the press button safety actually in the safety catch is a bit suspect, isn't it, really? But um, it is. Uh, it's, stuck with it. It's more of a sort of an afterthought, isn't it, as to yeah. where, where can we put a safety catch? I mean, I don't tend to use safety catches, really, to be honest. Snap. But if you, you want, know, yeah, I yeah. just think you know you should, um, you shouldn't, you just fire, get rid of the shot, really, rather than go if around. If the gun's empty, it's safe. Is, yeah, is, is that's my it. philosophy. But there's there's very few negative points to this, but I'd say that's probably one of them. But yeah, um, and then we move around to uh, show the the manometer, the, the the pressure gauge on the top there. Yeah, very precise, and of course that's in the perfect position there. Um, whereas a lot of manufacturers still, I mean, the air arms have done it with some rifles, but they put it in the end, beginning of the cylinder there. So you end up almost looking down the barrel, which isn't great. That's perfectly positioned there, and you've got a full check on um, residual power. So that's great, isn't it? Definitely, yes, it is. Now this one's had a sling stud fitted to the uh, to to the front of the stock, so a bipod can be fitted. Uh, a standard that, that they don't come with that, but you can mm. see the underneath of the, um, the sort of rosewood capping on there as well. That's the very arms. nice, isn't it? Yeah, really, it's classy, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Nicely just turn it over this way so the uh, I mean that's so that's something that's always to me looked like a, I mean I'm a massive air arms fan but that's always a bit looked a bit like an add-on um, but it's such a slick system you know that's the side plate for the magazine that receives the magazine as you snap it in um, it's not aesthetically pleasing but it really works well the whole it does just work doesn't it yes yeah, yeah. that's it absolutely yeah. So the barrel, that's a, they use a match grade Lothar Walther barrel on these, don't they? Yeah, that's it. Which it really does perform. Yeah, I mean, that's the downside of a lot of, um, um, you know, some of the cheaper air, air guns on the market. 
um, and the barrel can be the um, you know the that just slightly lets them down. But um, yeah, these are very high grade barrels, and as I say, you've got sort of um, match winning accuracy. You know, you could the world is your oyster with one of these. You, you know, it's the the triggers are sort of a, a hunting trigger rather than a full match unit, but um, it's all pretty damn good. You know, it's mm. yeah. Now the scope on on this one, we, we, here we are. We've, we've paired it up with a a nice hawk scope, and it's on a, a nine to eleven mil dovetail, which is the, the standard traditional scope mounting really for an air rifle. Quite a few of the the, the newer tactical style are going over to Picatinny, but we we still love the uh, the dovetail. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, th I, th I think it's um it's become very trendy, isn't it, Picatinny? It has. Yeah. I think it's it's sort of o overkill a lot of the time on an air gun. You know, it's a bit, especially on a PCP. There's there's almost zero uh, recoil, so yeah. you simply don't need all the you know the locking it into the the rails etc. But aesthetics, um, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Definitely. But yeah, this this works perfectly well. Yeah. It? Now this is the rifle length, and in one seven seven as this this is in the rifle length, we'd be looking at eighty shots in one seven seven and a hundred shots in two two. In the carbine version, which is is about four inches shorter, both in the cylinder and the and the barrel, we'd be looking at sixty shots in one seven seven and eighty in two two. There's a, a little bit of difference. Mm, that's not bad, is it? No. no but if you think if you go if you are going to use it for hunting. Uh, well, obviously, if you're going to need it for competition, you've got, if you think you need, say, 30 target, 30 to 40 shots for HFT uh, and about 50 for FT. So you're, um, you've still got plenty, really, for that. And if you're going to go hunting, you know, who's going to go and use 60 odd shots if you go hunting on a session? It'd be far a, less than that's that. That's a busy probably. session. Yeah. yeah that's it. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, how would we say this compares to, to put, put it against a uh, one of the Turkish offerings? Um, probably around about the same sort of price. Yeah, I think you just. I think you'd probably find um, most of the time that these are more. These would be more consistent over a batch of rifles as far as accuracy goes. Um, that's what I would find. The barrel would would be um, slightly let down. Some of the other makes um, and build quality. I mean, it's the, the wood to metal fit, the machining on this. Um, you know the, the the air arm setup now and down in Sussex is all CNC machinery. Um, you're talking, you know, serious engineering, and um, that's slightly going to set things apart um, between some other makes. You know, you can you can get some really nice guns out there now, but it just depends what you want to do with it and how much you want to spend. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, if you want to go, if you do, if you've got competition in mind, then I think. Then this would really make sense. Um, Longevity, I think, with air arms as well. Yeah, you know that it, it's ten years time. That's still going to be a superb rifle. You might have had it service once. Oh, definitely. Maybe yeah. twice, but uh, it's still going to retain quite mm. a high residual value as well. Yeah, and so. all, and it's a classic thing about the simplification of it. The, the more complex things are, the more there is to go wrong in theory. Yeah. Um, and these are. It's a really nice, simple design, made really well. You know, that's, that's the nuts and bolts of it, isn't it? Definitely. The weight of these rifles, Mark, is uh, varies a little bit on length, doesn't it, and stock? It does, yeah. I mean, this one will say, as we said, we, this is the full um, classic, full full length one, and in the super light stock, and this is about uh, 2.9 kilograms. But, um, yeah, you can... Uh, a little bit heavier in the... About 400 grams, I think, heavier in the... Uh, in the beach stock, isn't it? Mm. And the carbine is probably a hundred. In, in this guise, it's probably a hundred grams, uh, hundred grams lighter, and the, the same would go for the beach. Yeah. So again, it just depends. It's something else to bear in mind. Um, I mean, I would, you know, I always prefer the look of a walnut, um, a walnut sporting stock. But it, you know, if you want to, it depends on the weight. You, you, it's worth bearing those in mind, isn't it? It certainly is. Now, one one thing when, when you talk about walnut. Um, now the beach isn't ambidextrous, is it? The the beach is right-handed. If you want ambidextrous, the super light stocks are both ambidextrous, and you can have the walnut in left hand as well. Yeah, actually, that's something I wasn't aware of. Actually, the, the super light is an ambidextrous. Yeah, it is one. ambidextrous. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that's ambidextrous for the stock. The bolt handle can't be changed though, because that would need a modification inside the 
inside the action. Mm. But yeah, it is quite nice to have, um, because I mean, most guns you think are going to at full ambit fully ambidextrous aren't they now? They are. Yeah. But it's quite nice yeah. to have when you do um, you know I'm, I'm right handed and when you suddenly handle a gun that's and say the, the standard walnut stock has got a right hand bias on it and um and I think they charge extra don't they for left hand uh, stocks. They do a little bit yeah normally but it, yeah, it's but it's nice to have that dedicated grip. You know, you suddenly feel your palm properly filled and it's just that a little bit of extra um extra detail. So it's something again it's something else to bear in mind. You can take the ambi route, but um, yeah, it's it, it's handling can be um, enhanced if you if you get a dedicated stock. Yeah, if it's just for you, I think you you get get your dedicated stock. Hmm. If it's for the family, so if it's for yourself and your son, one's lefty, one's yeah, righty. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, then everyone can. Yeah, use it. yeah. everybody's happy with a super light, aren't they? Hmm. Now the barrel lengths I, I mentioned earlier, the, there's around about four inches difference in the barrel length. In the carbine, you, you're looking just under 40 centimetres and in the rifle length you're looking just just under 50 centimetres which takes the overall length of the rifle from in rifle length just over a metre probably an inch I shouldn't really mix metric and imperial up should I an inch over a metre that that isn't very good mm. but, uh, <laughs> but about a thousand and twenty millimetres so yeah mm. and four inches or a hundred millimetres less than that for the carbine Mm. Now, do they both? Do, do you think they both handle and balance quite nicely with the? Well, again, this is this is going to be a bit of personal taste because I mean, I you know I ran a club for a good while locally, and um, that's HFT did, club. Wasn't yeah, it? that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. and I've mean, come across a lot of people over the years who are they're drilling the back out of the stock and putting lead weights in and things. They want all the weight at the back, whereas I love a bit more front weight. So I would go for the classic length. Personally, you've just got a bit more. Of a, of a front bias but um there's not much not much in it and again you can yeah. always add i mean if you put something like a bipod on you're gonna dramatically alter the weight aren't you so yeah you can always play around with weight and add a bit more up front or back yeah so definitely yeah. and as we as as with all the you know the, the air arms manufactured rifles the action is beautifully smooth as well when they're new they, they take a little bit of wearing in that they're quite firm not stiff, I'd, I'd say firm, but they are super smooth. Hmm. Safe safety on the um, on the trigger there, very easy to use. As you said, probably probably not the best, but it works well. But it, it's it, just yeah, it, it's it a, does. It's but a little suspect in, <laughs> in its positioning. <laughs> I'm I'm not as fan of safety catches myself as hmm. we were as we were talking earlier. Hmm. Um, yeah, if, neither if, am I. I just think you know, if you if you've loaded it, it's probably best to safely yeah. discharge it. But yeah. um, if it's a, a, an empty gun, as a safe gun, yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. Now, the S four hundred, which we which we haven't really touched on, is a single shot version of the of this rifle. But in the S four ten version, it comes with two ten shot round ten shot magazines as standard from from mm. you. Yeah, I mean, and something to mention about that fundamental stuff really is, I mean, obviously I'm obsessed with competition and I'd go for single shot, so the S400 every time, simply because you're not asking a pellet to jump through a different chamber as you are with the magazine. That said, the magazines are so well made here that it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you're hunting, it's, it's, it seems logical to have a, a magazine for your backup shots, etc. But if you're going to be shooting competition for safety on the range and to um, easily abide by all the rules, etc., then it's single shot every time. Personally, plus also if you could, if you take the the 400 route against the 410, um, it's about a hundred pound difference, isn't it? At least I think it is. Yes, so yes, you know, it is. You can yes. again, you can save money that way. You're quite um, right. If it's you know appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe afford you a bit better stock option if you went for the 400. Yeah, that's right. Single shot. Yeah. Yeah, mm. definitely. Well, I'm just loading up the magazine and we're going to swap positions and Mark's going to show us how the S410 performs. Right, we're just going to fire a few shots down range. So as we said, the this is the classic 10 shot um, air arms cassette style mag. Now this is, um, as I say, you've got the, the side plate inside. So you just pull the bolt back and then these snap in you can just feel that connect, all nice and positive. 
I'm just going to do a few shots. Joining the dots up there, Mark. Okay, there we are. Yeah, not not quite uh, as um, just a bit off close as I'd like, but yeah, I mean this this pellet straight from the tin. But um, yeah, it's a it's a joined hole as such. Um, and that was Air Arms field targets, wasn't it? Eight point four grains, just just standard straight out the tin. Yeah, that's it. And obviously, you know, as with all these air guns, you can spend time um, real batch testing and just getting the the pellet that it you really see the barrel likes uh, the most. But yeah, it's not a bad starting point. Not but bad yeah. at all. So we've just done a few shots downrange there. Um, that's probably about five, you can probably cover that with a five p piece. Um, obviously it's twenty five yards, but I mean these these things are built to shoot. As I say, you can do field target with them up to fifty five yards, and um, you know they're, they're, you can get some pretty damn good groups out of them. Um, obviously, if you're going to hunt, it's all about knowing your range, and you'd bring the distance in accordingly to your performance as as we'd always say wouldn't we mm. but, yeah but yeah, yeah very very capable rifles absolutely i think consistency is is the the, the catch word isn't it with 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 air arms it's yeah a, definitely it's con accuracy and consistency yeah. and as we mentioned that if you charge them carefully to a certain pressure that you um you know you can check it all out and then if you're careful with your charging pressure they can be astoundingly consistent, yeah. although they're not regulators, super, super, as we said. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let's do let's do a roundup. What, what what are the highlights for you of the rifle, Mark? Um, well, I think as we've as we've mentioned that the build quality, the finish, um, and the fact that it's a relatively simple design, it keeps things simple. It really does. It's a cliche, but it does what it says on the tin. You know, this this gives you um, a great. It, a great chance of doing anything really that you want if you want to enter competitions you can do it if you want to go hunting this is a cracking hunting gun and it's not going to tire you out because it doesn't you know it's not overly weighty mm. um so yeah it's it's just got yeah a, a lot to offer and it's 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 keeping things simple against a lot of guns which are deliberately giving you loads and loads of features but um it's that nth degree performance and i'd always talk about with this sort yeah. of thing yeah you know yeah value for money yeah, I mean, they've had, everyone's had to increase their prices, and um, you know, air arms prices have all come in. You know, everything went up at the beginning of the year, or what have you. But um, when we've had so many pressures on the whole industry to uh, increase prices for various reasons. So yeah, I think these at, I mean, how much are these? For about that's um, the beach ones, about six hundred or more. No, in the four ten, I think they're, they're a little bit more than that now. Oh. Obviously, just check on the website for the. Uh, but again, the link compared the to you know, there's so many premium guns now which are costing you know well into the thousands, and I think this for um for that you know the money they're asking for the the the, the starting point, um yeah it's it's it's, it's a lot of gun for the money really, it is, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it's going to outperform and outlast the 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 ones from different foreign manufacturers, so mm. the, the Turkish ones, the Chinese ones. Yeah, it's, that's it. It's going to be there in ten years' time, good as new. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and as sure. as we've said before, you can add bits on or have it um, played around with and tuned and elevate performance even more. But you've got such a great um, stand, you know, sort of starting point base rifle, haven't you? Yeah. With this, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's all about the quality, really, Brilliant. which is what you get with the AR, uh, with the Air Arms badge, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and uh, love to hear, see your comments and your questions uh, that you leave for us. Uh, have a look at our website, rangingcountry.co.uk. Um, see you in the next video. Yeah, cheers. See you then. Thank you.